What's up guys, I'm DK and you're watching Pro Wrestling What If, the series where I look at the different what if scenarios as terms of the world that we call professional wrestling. At the Royal Rumble in 1998, Shawn Michaels would defend the WWE Championship against The Undertaker in a casket match. However, during that match, Shawn Michaels would receive a back body drop over the top rope and would clip his back off of the edge of the casket and injured three discs in his back. This injury would cause him to miss out on competing at the following pay-per-view of No Way Out in Texas in your house, but was still allowed to compete in the main event of WrestleMania 14, where he would drop the WWE Championship to the Royal Rumble winner, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And due to this back injury, this would force Shawn Michaels to retire from professional wrestling entirely, and he would only appear sporadically on WWE TV the next couple of years in non-wrestling roles. However, Shawn Michaels would make a return in 2002 at SummerSlam against the game Triple H in an unsanctioned match, which marked Shawn Michaels' first professional wrestling match in four years, or at least in the WWE. But I think a big question that not only myself, but a lot of people have been wondering, what if Shawn Michaels hadn't missed that time during the Attitude Era and wrestled throughout that? So that is going to be the topic of today's episode. We're talking what if Shawn Michaels never retired in 1998. And if you end up enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share this to all your friends, subscribe and press the notification bell for when future episodes get released and leave a comment down below about today's topic or suggesting a future topic for an episode of Pro Wrestling What If. And I'm going to be talking about each year one by one from 1998 all the way until 2002 and discuss what I think would have happened if Shawn Michaels stuck around. So kicking off with 1998 and first and foremost Shawn Michaels would right away have his back surgery since he actually didn't have it until January of 1999. And Shawn Michaels would miss a few months of WWE TV and I feel like the logical storyline involving Shawn Michaels return would be against Triple H since Triple H had kicked him out of DX the night after WrestleMania 14. So I think this storyline would begin the moment that Triple H would suffer his knee injury shortly after winning the Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam against The Rock, where I believe Shawn Michaels would return on TV to try and place himself back into D-Generation X, more specifically as the leader since Triple H is currently out with injury and isn't leading the group. And this makes the members of D-Generation X question whether this is a right decision or not to have Shawn Michaels once again in the group. However, it would end up that Shawn Michaels shouldn't have been trusted because he would only use DX to get himself into the championship picture once again by winning the Deadly Games Tournament at Survivor Series, which of course in the real timeline, it was The Rock who had won the Deadly Games Tournament and hold the WWE Championship. But of course, we know that there was tension between Shawn Michaels and The Rock at this time, so there is a big chance that Shawn Michaels would have pulled ticked his way in not having The Rock become the champion at around this time and make him the champion. And it also definitely makes sense for Shawn Michaels winning with that very same screw job finish since of course the year prior at Survivor Series was the infamous Montreal screw job where Shawn Michaels did win the WWE Championship from Bret Hart. So one year later he uses the same tactics on Mankind to once again hold the WWE Championship. This would then mean that Shawn Michaels would join the corporation, which Shawn Michaels did end up joining the corporation in the real timeline at the end of 1998. The last pay-per-view of the year, which was the Rock Bottom pay-per-view, would most likely need to be renamed since, of course, it's not the Rock in this timeline that wins the Deadly Games Tournament. It is Shawn Michaels. So let's say, what, Heartbreak Havoc could be the name of the pay-per-view? I'm not exactly sure. If you got a clever pay-per-view name to replace Rock Bottom, let me know in the comments. And after Shawn Michaels would end up retaining the WWE Championship at that pay-per-view, out comes Triple H making his return for the first time in months after suffering that knee injury in which we now have the feud set between Shawn Michaels and Triple H beginning in 1999. So now we are in the year 1999 at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, we most likely would get Triple H versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship. And of course it would make sense because even though Shawn Michaels has made his return it 
isn't the same Shawn Michaels that we've seen in 2002, he's still a d So he most likely would be put in feuds with his clique members, especially Triple H. So in this case, I think Shawn Michaels would retain the championship at the Royal Rumble, but a rematch would be set between Triple H and Shawn Michaels at the St. Valentine's Day Massacre event. And the stipulation is set for this championship match where no corporation members are allowed to interfere in the match. And some way, somehow, Shawn Michaels actually overcomes those odds and retains the championship, but that is because of interference from China, who turns her back on Triple H and joins the corporation, which that storyline actually happened in the real timeline. And while this is all happening, you most likely still would have that Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon steel cage match that involved the Big Show's debut. And then that would mean that the stage is set for WrestleMania 15 being the rematch from the prior year of Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship. And this match at WrestleMania 15 could be better than the match they had at WrestleMania 14 since now Shawn Michaels is at 100% and no longer has that back injury. And that could definitely play towards the storyline where Shawn Michaels believes that the only only way Stone Cold beat him the year prior was because Shawn Michaels wasn't at 100%, but now Stone Cold has to test himself and to see if he can beat Shawn Michaels now that he's at 100%, which of course, like the real timeline, Stone Cold Steve Austin would walk out as the WWE Champion at WrestleMania 15. Shortly after this happens, Shawn Michaels would get kicked out of the corporation in which he would be replaced by his now rival, Triple H. Shawn Michaels would be taken off TV once again to do a storyline angle of injury and he would be back just in time for Fully Loaded, in which he probably wouldn't have a match at fully loaded is just a setup for the following pay-per-view, which of course would be SummerSlam. And I would imagine that we would still have the same triple threat match that we had in the real timeline with Stone Cold, Triple H, and Mankind. However, Mankind is replaced in the match, and can you guess who he gets replaced by? If you guess Shawn Michaels, that is 100% correct. So we would have Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. Of course, Shawn Michaels being Shawn Michaels at this time would once again politic his way into the main event scene. Except I think this time around, Triple H would actually win the championship at SummerSlam instead of the night after the event taking it off of Mankind. And then to sum up the rest of 1999 for Shawn Michaels, it's most likely being pretty much near that main event scene where either he's fighting some top stars or he's having those WWE championship matches against Triple H. Now we go to the year of 2000, in which the most likely scenario for the Royal Rumble event at the beginning of the year would be to compete in the Royal Rumble match. And in this timeline, we would still get the matches between Triple H and Mick Foley for Royal Rumble, followed by No Way Out. However, even though it seems like Shawn Michaels might not be in the WWE Championship picture come WrestleMania 2000, that isn't the case as he once again manages to get away in to that title picture, being a part of that fatal foray match with the McMahon in every corner. And because Mick Foley is retired at this point, that they would probably actually slide Shawn Michaels into this position. Of course, Shawn Michaels doesn't walk out with the WWE Championship at this point because we would still have the same finish where the final two is The Rock versus Triple H, where of course, Triple H does retain the WWE Championship, making him the first heel to walk out of WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. Now, after WrestleMania 2000, a couple of scenarios could happen. One scenario is that Shawn Michaels would officially take time off to get himself into rehab and eventually become a born-again Christian due to his drug and alcohol addictions at this time. Or scenario number two would be that he officially jumps ship and joins Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in WCW. However, the choice that I've done with this timeline is that he does take the time off. Especially around this time, his first child was born a few months prior from WrestleMania 2000, and this would actually give him time to spend time with his family and get his life together. And especially with the realization that with Stone Cold Steve Austin out, that McMahon would rely on The Rock to actually be the number 
number one guy of the WWE and not Shawn Michaels. Now we move into the year of 2001. For 2001, Shawn Michaels would miss the entire year. I thought about a scenario in which maybe he would come back just in time for the invasion angle, but I think we can all agree that this time was well needed for Shawn Michaels because if let's say I went with the WCW route, then not gonna lie, there's a pretty big chance that Shawn Michaels' drug and alcohol addiction would become so bad where there's a chance that he probably would have died. And we would have eventually seen an episode of Dark Side of the Ring involving Shawn Michaels. But now we go to the year 2002, in which he does make his return to professional wrestling at this time, but not at SummerSlam. I think that Shawn Michaels would make his return on the road to WrestleMania 18. And there's two opponents in mind that I think he could face at that event. The first opponent in mind would be Kevin Nash since Kevin Nash actually didn't have a match at that event and he was only managing Scott Hall during the event when he faced Stone Cold Steve Austin. So if it wouldn't affect the card that much as terms to switching up some matches, it's just adding a match with Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash since of course they're great friends because of the click and they had previously had that match at WrestleMania 11. Or option number two, and I think you guys would like this option, is that he would actually face Kurt Angle at the event. And I would imagine this being more of an open challenge where Kurt Angle wants a match at WrestleMania and challenges anyone in the locker room and out comes Shawn Michaels for the first time at this point in two years since the last time we seen him wrestle in this timeline was WrestleMania 2000. And so of course Shawn Michaels pulls off a clinic with a great athlete like Kurt Angle and we would see the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels defeat Kurt Angle and this match ends up being so good that they actually continue it as a feud where Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle once again wrestle each other at the Backlash event, but this time around, Kurt Angle wins the match. And then that leads to the final match between the two that would happen at Judgment Day, where of course, it's a hair versus hair match. And we would see the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels defeat Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle would have his head shaved. So this does mean that Shawn Michaels replaces Edge in this timeline because it was Edge who had the matches at Backlash and Judgment Day. However, I can guarantee you that all three of these Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle matches would have been better than the match that Edge and Kurt Angle pulled off, although those matches were great in their own right. And for that few to have continued after WrestleMania, this would confirm that when it comes to the very first WWE draft in 2002, Shawn Michaels would actually be a part of SmackDown instead of being a part of Raw. And after Judgment Day, Shawn Michaels would compete in the King of the Ring tournament in which he would make it to the finals against the up and coming rookie, the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. But of course, like the real timeline, Brock Lesnar ends up winning the match. Shawn Michaels doesn't compete at the Vengeance pay-per-view the following month because he gets attacked backstage from Chris Jericho. However, Shawn Michaels would be a part of the Vengeance event as he would distract Chris Jericho and cause him to lose his match against John. John Cena, and then for SummerSlam, we see Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho one-on-one. -on -one. We get it much earlier than we did in the real timeline at WrestleMania 19 in 2003, and we would of course see Shawn Michaels defeat Jericho just like we did in the real timeline. Now you're probably wondering, what happens to Shawn Michaels after this event? Does he somehow go to Monday Night Raw and continue everything he did, especially with Triple H, or does he continue to stay on SmackDown? down and possibly feud with Brock Lesnar over the WWE Championship. And this is where I say I'm going to leave it to you guys to discuss your opinion of what would happen right after that.